need a short one. Uh, following the <coughs> delivery of the majority judgment on the 20th of September 2017, a judgment which annulled the outcome of the presidential election held on the 8th of August 2017, and which decreed that the election be repeated within a period of 60 days, the chairman of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission returned to the court with a motion seeking clarification of an aspect of the task assigned to him by the wording of the said judgment. The Constitution of Kenya 2010, Article 163, Sabbatical 2, provides that, quote, the Supreme Court shall be properly constituted for purposes of its proceedings if it is composed of five judges, end of quote. At the hearing of the notice of motion, which related to a final judgment issuing forth from the court, I was part of the quorum setting, notwithstanding that I had delivered a detailed dissenting judgment on the 20th of September 2017. Having been fully involved in the hearing of the notice of motion, I now have the obligation to render a separate opinion which properly reflects my viewpoint as a judge. However, upon considering the tenor and effect of the majority's position in this ruling on jurisdiction and related elements, I find myself in agreement with the overall outcome in that regard. Hence, this opinion, which nonetheless takes a differing course of explication. The majority judgment embodied the declaration that, quote, the president, the presidential election held on the 8th of August 2017 was not conducted in accordance with the Constitution and the applicable law rendering the declared result by the IEBC chairman invalid, null and void, end of quote. Being concerned to fully comply with the majority's terms in the conduct of elections again, the second respondent moved the court to make an appropriate clarification on the following points. Point number one, is it the ballot figures recorded in Forms 34B submitted by the constituency returning officers to the National Telling Center, or the ballot figures recorded on Forms 34A from individual polling stations that must be used in declaring the presidential election results? And secondly, how ought the respondents to proceed in ascertaining the vote tallies where discrepancies are found between the two sets of forms, that is 34A and 34B. The two questions arose not only because the majority decision had left them open, but in particular because that decision had upheld an earlier Court of Appeal decision, Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission against Maina Kiai and five others, Civil Appeal Number 105 of 2017, to the effect that the second respondent may not correct, vary, confirm, alter, modify, or adjust the results transmitted from the constituency telling center to the national telling center. The effect being that the results declared by the constituency returning officer were final as far as the national telling center was concerned. Notwithstanding such a prescription in the Maina Kiai case, the majority judgment had required a verification of votes cast by the respondents, and this would entail an arithmetical process. The applicant says that the judgment of the 20th of September 2017 does not signal the obligation required of the respondents if, upon verification, they find that the vote count recorded on the basis of Forms 34B does not conform to the to that captured in Forms 34A. The applicant's motion is brought in the context of Articles 138, 163, 159 of the Constitution, 
Section 21.4 of the Supreme Court Act 2011 and Rule 3.2.4.5 of the Supreme Court Rules 2012. Article 138 of the Constitution relates to the procedure applicable to presidential election. Article 163 provides for the establishment and jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And Article 159 gives broad directions on the reaches of judicial authority. Questions of jurisdiction against such a background are to be seen in relation to the terms of Section 21.4 of the Supreme Court Act, which thus provides, quote, within 14 days of delivery of its judgment, ruling or order, the court may, on his own motion or on application by any party with notice to the other or others, correct any oversight or clerical error of computation or other error apparent on such judgment, ruling or order, and such correction shall constitute part of the judgment, ruling or order of the court, end of quote. The one case that has considered the Supreme Court's special jurisdiction under the Constitution of Kenya 2010 is Honorable Lemanken Aramat against Arun Maitame, Lempaka, and two others, petition number five of 2014, and paragraph 101 of that decision reads as follows, quote, we would make it clear in the instant case, that it is a responsibility vested in the Supreme Court to interpret the Constitution with finality. And this remit entails that this court determines appropriately those situations in which it ought to resolve the questions coming up before it, in particular, where these have a direct bearing on the interpretation and application of the Constitution. Besides, as the Supreme Court carries the overall responsibility, Articles 16237, for providing guidance on matters of law for the state's judicial 